Uh, part of our vocational training that uh, we'd like to give the children a chance to get some skills, we've chosen beekeeping. Uh, beekeeping is something that um, uh, isn't done uh, a whole lot in this area. There's some, but it certainly isn't something that is overdone, and so it's a good opportunity, and it can produce cash, can uh, train the kids in something that they can go out and make a living at, and uh, also help train the community of some income generating things that they can do. So we're excited about the potential that we have in a um, beekeeping project. So uh, we were given training in Kampala by a man there. He came from Singapore, but he's really interested in bees and, and has given us our training of how to set up our hives and how to do the, the processing. So we have some professional help, which we desperately need because we're not uh, versed in this, he has to teach us. So some of the children went and we went and we got the training and now we're set up with our, our, uh, our bee station, which is called an apiary. And uh, by having the hive set out, uh, uh, if, uh, if a swarm of bees is looking for a new home, then sometimes the scout bees find a nice home and we hope it's our hive and uh, they go back and tell the message and the queen comes there and once the queen is in the hive, then the workers are all attracted to that queen. That's the secret, is to get the queen in the hive. And so um, uh, we started out with just putting our hives out, and um, now some bees have found us. I think we have about 20 colonies now there. And uh, so once they start colonizing, uh, then they start building their comb. They start, uh, the queen lays eggs in uh, some of those cells and so it starts making more little baby bees and then the, the colony gains in strength. So um, we're hoping that we have almost 50 hives put out there right now. So we're hoping that they all get colonized within the year. And so that would give us a, uh, a pretty vigorous little project the kids could tend to. And then we could take some of that honey and sell it in our, um, our vocational uh, gift shop. So this is uh, kind of the nature of this project. We have uh, built a framework here in our apiary of some metal bars. Uh, we tried the wooden stands, but the termites are such a problem that they just ate them up. And then the ants were more likely to crawl up on that. And ants inside here can be a big problem too. So we did the extra expense of putting a steel framework so we could hang them from a wire and uh, uh, so that's just a little bit less of a trouble to us, but it's more expensive initially because you have to buy these angle bars and uh, put it like that. So we've put a, a papyrus mat on top so that we have some shade. If uh, it's really hot in there, the bees are a bit more agitated. They're not as at home. So if they can be in some shade, we'd like to get uh, uh, trees planted around here. We have a few trees planted, but it's going to take some time for us to actually have shade. So we'll, we'll do something like that. Now this is called a Kenya top bar hive. And uh, it's designed to be quite simple. There's other hives and uh, they, can, they work well too. But this one for our application, since it's a simple application and, we're, and uh, all of us are just learning, it seems to be a very good uh, uh, option. So it simply has a lid. You see we have it covered with some kind of a metal so it's uh, uh, rainproof. And so the lid just keeps things covered. Then these are, it's, we said it was a Kenya top bar. These only have a, a bar at the top. And so we see there, and there's a uh, saw kerf down the center of that bar. This is uh, 32 millimeters wide. It's a specific width because the bees tend, we put beeswax in that groove and then they're attracted to that and they'll start building their comb right down that kerf and this is just the right width that they like for having their comb one here and then one there and one there and so it fits what they already are programmed to do so it's made very specifically to a specific size because they've studied this and they know what the bees are going to respond to so the um, the holes are here at the front and so they start and they start, um, they start uh, making their comb there. Then we have one section here, and this is called a queen excluder. So the queen is bigger bee, 
and she can't go through there. And the workers can go through, but the queen cannot. So as we have that queen excluder first in a, a place like this, then they can be building combs in this first part, and we don't take honey from this first part. This is the brood. This is where the baby bees are. And so in there's, there's going to be some honey there, but there's also going to be uh, for the baby bees. So she'll be laying eggs in those places, and then the bees are feeding those babies, and then they're growing up. And as, they, as, a, as the hive gets stronger, then they'll also start building combs back here. But this will keep it so there's no brood. There's no baby bees back here because when you harvest your honey, then that's kind of a contaminant if you have baby bees in your honey. So this keeps it so these bars back here only have honey. So when it's time to harvest honey, uh, the, bee, the beekeepers can come. They, can, they, can, they remove the lid. They have their bee outfit on, and they can carefully, quietly, they can just remove that comb, and there will be bees on it, and they can look at it, they can check it, and when that comb is uh, built, and it kind of will really be built like this, and that's why the slant of the hive is like this, because they normally build in a shape like this, it just about fits, and you can see if they're capped. If this comb is capped, that means it's full of honey and they're finished. And so that one is ready to take. And we we'd just simply take that and we'd sit it in a, another box. We wouldn't uh, cut it or anything because that would expose honey. They'd smell that. They'd become a little bit agitated about us stealing their honey. So uh, we wouldn't take, we'd probably leave a couple in there so they don't think they've lost everything. Then if there's a couple more, we'll take those and replace it with a fresh bar and then just put the lid back on. So they just continue that cycle. So they're building more comb here. And so as, as the hive matures, we move that queen excluder back. And so that in time, it ends up that we have about half is brood and half is honey. And so a, a, a nice healthy hive will have about 60,000 bees. So there's a, a lot of bees going on, coming and going in here, and it's, a, it's an active place. And um, uh, there's, a, there's a couple other things that you can do for bees. Uh, if there's a little crack somewhere, they'll fill it with a black substance that they get from uh, pitch, honey, they chew it, and they fill up the cracks. And it's called propolis. And propolis has some medicinal uses and so it's also something that you can har harvest is you can take and scrape out the propolis and keep it and then uh, they can do some medicinal things with with that they also on the front of the hive you can put a little uh, uh, device there that you can collect some of the pollen that collects on their legs and so you can collect bee pollen and that's another saleable product from uh, the bee har uh, beekeeping so you could have honey you could have pollen you could have propolis and so we're just needing to learn all those things. And so it's kind of exciting to see our first hives develop and uh, the, the potential of doing some of those things. Uh, part of our beekeeping uh, project is um, also involves this catcher box. So it's really just a miniature hive. And if we place those in various places around the property or even in the community on people's property, when the bees are looking for a home, they find this and they enter there, they start building their combs and uh, see there's room for about uh, six or eight top bars in there and when they when they get uh, those being built then we'll just take the catcher box and uh, we can then transfer those top bars right into a hive and so it's just transferring that whole uh, new hive right into a new home and then we can put the catcher ba box back out and so it just makes more opportunities, more locations where you might uh, capture a group that has uh, come looking for a new home. And uh, so it lets us get another whole colony of bees. When we do it in the community, we'll pay the community uh, people 5,000 shillings if they get a catcher box that uh, has built combs in it. Then we'll just transfer them, take it back to them. And so it's a little bit of an income thing for them in the village. And then if they got interested, and one to really get started on beekeeping, 
then that's an introduction and uh, they could get some more information and knowledge and actually start raising some bees.